Let us look at the objectives of this module. The objectives of this modules are to interpret the concept of functional literacy, to identify the objectives of integrating literacy with farmers training and functional literacy project, to examine the organization of farmers training and functional literacy project, to compare the strengths and limitations of farmers training and functional literacy project, to list the developmental schemes and projects of Government of India where literacy was integrated. Today we will talk about the era of functional literacy. Attainment of literacy is not an end in itself. It goes beyond the rudimentary three R's encapsulated in reading, writing and arithmetic. It is a vital element in development. It is linked to the economic and social priorities of individuals and of the communities in which they live. It is linked with productivity, it is linked with work, it is linked with the current and future needs of our labour. It was with this realisation that the, the concept of functional literacy emerged. The UNESCO's World Conference on Adult Education held in Canada in 1960 and the World Conference of Education Ministers held in Tehran in 1965, which was on eradication of literacy, both emphasized the functional aspect of literacy, the productivity and work aspects of literacy. Let us see what this conference had to say about functional literacy. The very process of learning to read and write should be made an opportunity for acquiring information that can immediately be used to improve living standards. Reading and writing should lead not only to elementary general knowledge but to training for work, increased productivity, a greater participation in civic life and a better understanding of the surrounding world and should ultimately open the way to basic human culture. The international thinking on adult education had its impact on Indian planners and policy makers. Dr. V. K. R. V. Rao, well-known economist and a member of the Planning Commission in 1965, was an ardent follower of functionality in adult education. In 1965, in the month of June, Planning Commission organized a conference of the education ministers, the state education ministers and emphasized the importance of functional literacy and linking of functional literacy with other developmental activities in the states. This conference noted lack of functional literacy among the rural poor was an important reason for restricting the success of schemes for their development in the areas of agriculture, family planning, panchayati raj, cooperatives and others. This module throws light on how this idea was implemented by integrating literacy with other development programs, particularly the huge program of farmers training and functional literacy. UNESCO defined functional literacy as literacy integrated with occupation of the learner and directly related to development. Pursuant to the World Conference of Education Ministers in 1965 on eradication of illiteracy, UNESCO together with UNDP built up a huge program on experimental world literacy project. This experimental world literacy project funded several developing countries for literacy programs, especially functional literacy programs, different aspects of functional literacy program were funded uh, in this project. Let us look at the objectives of this experimental world literacy project. The main objectives of experimental world literacy project were to test and demonstrate the economic returns of literacy, to test and demonstrate social returns of literacy, to study the mutual relations and influences between literacy training among working population and development, 
Under the Experimental World Literacy Program, India received financial assistance from UNDP for integrating literacy into other developmental programs, especially those conducted by other departments like the Department of Food and Agriculture, Department of Information and Broadcasting, Department of Social Welfare. Let us now look at the Farmers Training and Functional Literacy Program more closely. It was an inter-ministerial program started in 1967-68. Literacy was a vital component of this program. This was so because literacy was expected to enhance the gains of other activities of this program which was meant to improve the competency of the farmers in implementing the program of high yielding variety of wheat selected by the government of India in the context of improving their productivity, development and the green revolution. Literacy was such an important activity in this program because it was expected to improve the farmers in certain competencies, particularly it was expected that the farmers will be able to read and understand labels on fertilizer bags, fill up loan application forms, input cards, keep simple account of operations and read and make use of simple extension bulletins, rural newspapers, etc. As mentioned earlier, this was an interministerial program and the aim of this interministerial program was training about 5 million farm families in 100 selected HYP districts, imparting functional literacy to 1 million adults at the cost of 90 million rupees. Such a huge program required a lot of funds and let us now look at the funds that were received for this program. The Government of India funds received during the fourth plan included rupees 60 million by the Ministry of Agriculture for the farmers training, rupees 20 million by Ministry of Education and Functional Literacy, rupees 10 million by the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting for farm broadcasting. Along with this was UNDP and UNESCO assistance. Such a large scale program like the farmers training and functional literacy program needed a very well thought out administration and organizational structure. It could not be implemented without a good organizational structure in all the implementation districts. In each state, the HYP program was in three districts. Let us look at the organizational structure of this program. In each center, there was one instructor for 30 learners. Maximum number of centers per district was limited to 60. The centers in each district were under the charge of a project officer. The project officer was assisted by six part-time supervisors, each with 10 centers, or two full-time supervisors, each with 30 centers. The duration of this program was for one year. The year was divided into two phases of six months each. Literacy training went on every day for about an hour and a half per day. In each phase, 150 hours of active teaching was expected. The material used for teaching was region specific and problem oriented. The Directorate of Education, New Delhi, published Kisan Sakshartha Pehli Pustak it published teacher's guides. It also published prototype material, which was supplementary reading material that could be used, that could be adapted by uh, in all other situations in different states. Thereafter, nearly 70 titles were published under this scheme. Different types of training strategies were used in this program. The trainers, the instructors used oral instructions, they used demonstrations, practical training, field trips, audiovisual aids, discussions and so on. Detailed guidelines were prepared by the Government of India and the states were expected to follow the directives of the centre. Let us now look at the achievements of this huge programme which was implemented with such great efforts. Farmers Training and Functional Literacy Program was initiated in 1968 as a pilot project in three districts. Up to 1977, the program expanded to cover 144 districts out of 397. On an average, 
50,000 farm families attended the functional literacy classes each year. During the fourth five-year plan from 1969 to 74, nearly 30 lakh farmers joined the functional literacy classes. Evaluation conducted by Directorate of Adult Education indicated that farmers training and functional literacy program contributed to increase in agricultural production. The learner dropout rate was only 17.5%. The program implemented exclusively through official channels succeeded in developing skills and disseminating knowledge to improve agricultural practices among farmers who attended the program. Let us also look at some of the shortcomings of this program. The target of providing functional literacy to 10 million farmers was not fulfilled and expenditure of 8 million rupees was incurred as against the proposed outlay of 20 million rupees. There were inadequacies at the implementation of the scheme at the district level. Interdepartmental coordination was found to be deficient. Supervisory system was not good enough. A substantial proportion of grassroots level workers had no training. In many districts, the follow-up programs for the neoliterates were found to be weak. Beneficiaries were mainly from relatively well-off and enterprising farmers. Illiterates exploited marginal farmers and landless agricultural workers remained outside the programs. While the inadequacies stated at the end were rather serious, the Farmers Training and Functional Literacy program gave tremendous experience to the Indian adult educators in carrying out large-scale interdepartmental collaboration and integrating literacy with other development programs. In fact, in the 70s where several developmental programs were integrated with literacy. One of the important ones being literacy, adult literacy for women. Another important program was the Integrated Child Development Services program popularly known as the ICDS. The scheme for functional literacy for adult women was conceived as a package of programs for women between 15 and 45 years of age. This program was connected, was integrated and two ministries, mainly Education and Culture and uh, Ministry of Social Welfare gave this program jointly. Let us now look at the Integrated Child Development Program a little more closely. Launched in the year 1975, the program started in 33 blocks as projects with 4,891 Anganwadi centers in the country. The annual report of 2014-15 of the Ministry of Women and Child Development, Government of India, states that on December 31st, 2014, 7,067 projects were operational, 1,342,285 Anganwadis were functional, 34,982,000 children were preschool education beneficiaries, 1,041 were supplementary nutrition beneficiaries. ICDS is now one of the world's largest programs for early childhood development. Now let us look at the objectives of this huge project of ICDS. The objectives are to improve the nutritional and health status of children in the age group of 0 to 6, to lay the foundation of proper psychological, physical and social development of the child, to reduce the incidence of mortality, morbidity, malnutrition and school dropout, to achieve effective coordination of policy and implementation amongst the various departments to promote child development and to enhance the capability of the mother to look after the normal health and nutritional needs of the child through proper nutritional and health education. Adult literacy was added as a component to this program so that the women beneficiaries of this program would become literate and it would help in attainment of the objectives stated earlier. Functional literacy classes were organized by the Anganwadi workers in the ICDS project and the Anganwadi workers were paid a sum of 50 rupees for this work. The content of literacy included health and hygiene, food and nutrition, child care, civic responsibilities, and so on. This helped them to become better mothers and take care of their children in a better manner. 
As I said, the ICDS program started in India in 1975. It continues today even after 30 years as one of the largest programs for preschool education and development. Today we have Dr. Rita Sonawat with us who has been associated with this program for over a decade. She has engaged in training of Anganwadi workers, supervisors and project officers of this program. She has long experience and long association with this program. Let us see what she has to say about the program as it is today. As uh, Professor Chakravarti has very rightly said, ICDS program is one of the best programs in India. This is a flagship program of Government of India. Mrs. Hillary Clinton said, that uh, India's ICDS program on paper is one of the best programs in the world. Our most of the children, they are coming from the families where they are first generation learner. And there in the families, when we have visited, what we have observed is children, they don't have environment at home where they can do reading and writing. So, we found out what is the reason for this and we came to know that uh, the mothers and most of the time even fathers they are not educated they are uh, doing some small business or uh, they are doing some skilled jobs so resources are not at home and uh, parents even they are not aware that what they should be doing this child when the child comes from the Anganwadi. So, when we had interviewed with the parents, we came to know that uh, they don't have uh, uh, knowledge about infant stimulation program, stimulation what to give to the child, the importance of socialization, the imp importance of uh, uh, reading and writing, importance of storytelling and uh, when we have spoken to the Anganwadi workers related to this, then we thought there is a little difference between the two. Anganwadi workers, they are doing lot of efforts in this direction, but uh, there is no reinforcement from the home. So it's very important that uh, uh, teacher and mother, they should be speaking the same language with the child for the better development of the child. So uh, it's very important that uh, these mothers should be trained in a literacy, in an education program and uh, they should be having some skills how to learn for themselves as well as after they learn how they can teach their children. Because uh, unless the mother is educated, it is very difficult for her to understand the value of education and give the proper knowledge to the child. So I personally feel if Anganwari workers are trained in a literacy program and they can have a group meeting where they can give this program to the Anganwari workers, then uh, our preschool education program will be very successful. As very well said by our expert, an educated mother would be an asset to this particular program where the Anganwadi workers are training them to be good mothers to be uh, and equipping them with skills of child rearing, nutrition, health of children. A literacy program, literacy component attached to this program would certainly make it a stronger program so that the mothers can reinforce what has been given to them by the Anganwadi workers. So I think literacy is something that is missing now from this program. Some very important institutions were established in the era of functional education. The National Board of Adult Education started in 1969. The Directorate of Adult Education was established in 1971. In consonance with the thought during that time, in consonance with the era of functional education, the Central Advisory Board of Education recommended that adult literacy be linked with a number of developmental programs that were operational at that time and that were to be started in the later years. Let us look at some of the programs with which 
literacy was combined in that era. The developmental projects with which literacy was integrated in the era of functional education include Krishi Vigyan Kendras, Shramik Vidya Peet, Nehru Yuvak Kendra, Satellite Instructional Television Experiment, Rural Welfare Extension, Family and Child Welfare Project, Directorate of Adult Education actually identified 65 programs and schemes of Government of India uh, with a component of non-formal education. Thus, in the era of functional literacy, all-out efforts were made to link literacy with social and economic priorities of individuals and of the communities in which they live and to connect literacy with productivity and labor.